What is good everyone? For this video, I'll be creating another Learn From The Best. This time I'll be covering photographer Elliot Erwitt, a documentary and advertising photographer known for his black and white candid photos that mix the slightly comical in with everyday life, along with a variety of other work that we will be getting into. But if you're not familiar with what Learn From The Best is, it's a series here where I cover a variety of some of the most famous photographers. I cover their history, background, style and photography, interests, uh, gear they used, quotes, books published, just all the types of information I can gather on them. And not only do we cover that, but we also try to learn from it. And then we really get into learning from the best where I have a selection of some of their best known photos. We go into my computer and I share different insights and point out different things that we can learn through their photos and sometimes apply to our own work or be inspired by. As is a common theme on this channel, learning through photos, yours and others is one of the best ways to improve your photography. And of course, I'll be sharing a wider variety of their work throughout the video too. So let's get into it. Like I said, we're covering Elliot Erwitt, and here he is right here. Elliot Erwitt was born on July 26, 1928 in Paris, France to Jewish Russian immigrant parents. At the age of 10, his family immigrated to the United States. He studied photography and filmmaking at Los Angeles City College. After college, Erwitt traveled around France and Italy in 1949 with his Roliflex camera. In 1951, he was drafted for military service and undertook various photographic duties while serving in a unit of the Army Signal Corps in Germany and France. He soon met photographers Robert Kappa, Edward Steichen, and Roy Stryker, the latter whom hired him. After working for Stryker, he began his freelance photography career, working mostly in advertising and documentary work. In 1953, he joined the famous Magnum Photos Agency, which allowed him to shoot projects around the world. In addition to his interest in bringing out irony and the slightly absurd from life in everyday settings, he might be most widely known for his focus on dogs over the years. He has produced four books centered around capturing dogs candidly. His photographs of famous people though, including Che Guevara and Richard Nixon, add even more variety to his work over the years. In the late 1960s, Erwitt served as Magnum's president for three years. In the 1970s, he turned to movies, producing several notable documentaries, and later produced comedy films for HBO in the 1980s. Even today, at the age of 92, Erwa is available for hire and continues to work in photojournalism and commercial photography. Looking at his work, some of what Elliot was known for was having somewhat of a playful and amusing side to his photos, finding that from everyday life. His work has a strong focus on content, curiosity, observation, and just finding interest out of everyday life. When it comes to style though, one thing Elliot said was, I'm not conscious of personal style, I just like to take pictures. And when it comes to what he took photos with, his gear, for much of his career, he's known for liking to shoot with a Leica M3 rangefinder and a 50mm lens. In his early career, Erwitt used a Leica 3F and 3G with a 50mm lens, but switched to an M3 in the mid-1950s. He upgraded from M's from there on. The 50mm lens was always his preferred angle, though, but he did occasionally use a 90mm. Tri-X and HP4 have been his preferred black and white films. Outside of his personal work, he has also used the full Canon F1 line with lenses from 16mm to 300mm, and he has done some work with the 6x9 medium format too. The portability and ease of use were the main reasons Erwitt liked using Leica when it came to his personal work, but he has stated that he could open up a whole camera store with all the gear he's used. Now I'll share and cover a few quotes from Elliot and see how they apply to photography and if there's anything we can learn from some of them too. One famous quote from Elliot is, all the technique in the world doesn't compensate for the inability to notice. And what he means by that, of course, is you can learn all the technique in the world, all the rules, you can learn all about your camera, but if you're not able to see interest out there, you're not going to be able to take a photo of it either. So you have to really work on your eye and learn how to notice interest out there before you're ever going to be able to take good photos. And that's really what makes a great photographer is their eyes and that ability to notice certain things that other people wouldn't and make an interesting photo from what you notice. 
Another quote from Eliot, To me, photography is an art of observation. It's about finding something interesting in an ordinary place. I found it has little to do with the things you see and everything to do with the way you see them. And that relates to the previous quote too, but photography is really about observation and how you see the world. And that's really what makes interesting photos is how you can see the world and how you see it differently than someone else would have seen it too. And being able to go into an ordinary place and seeing something extraordinary from it. Elliot also said, I'm not a serious photographer like most of my colleagues. That is to say, I'm serious about not being serious. And you can see that in some of his work. He has fun with a lot of his photos. He finds the interesting, the amusing, the comical. And he doesn't take pictures that are always going to be serious, but that doesn't mean they're not just as valuable as the serious ones. And they can still say a lot about life, just in a more humorous way sometimes. Another quote from Elliot, I'm an amateur photographer apart from being a professional one, and I think maybe my amateur pictures are the better ones. And I think a lot of photographers probably feel that way because when you're taking the professional shots, you have to take the shots a certain way. But when you take the amateur shots, you can be totally free out there to see how you want to see and make the photos you want to make and be creative with it and be instinctual and just being free out there. It really comes from you then, and that's where usually the most interesting photos come from. And one last quote from Elliot, the whole point of taking pictures is so that you don't have to explain things with words. And I like that one because that's one of the things I love about photography is you don't have to explain it with words. I'm not as good with my words as I am with a camera. And for me, a picture is a much more interesting way to say something because you can look at that photo, no matter who the viewer is, they can make their own ideas from it and take their own things from that photo. So when you explain something, it's very specific to how you're explaining it. But with, in a photo, that person can take whatever they want from it and whatever they see. And I really like that about photography. All right, so now that you've learned a little bit about Elliot Erwitt, hopefully learned something from him too, seen some of his work, now we're really gonna learn from the best and learn through his photos. So I have a selection of some of his best known work that we're gonna learn from. So let's go into my computer and do that. Let's go. All right, so for this part two of Learn From The Best on Elliot Erwitt, I have a selection of some of his best known photos that we're going to learn through. I'm going to share different insights, strengths, different things that I think can be helpful to not only learn from, but maybe apply to your own photography and also show the different strengths that they had and why they're famous and so successful as photographers. So let's get started here. I also selected a variety because Elliot Erwitt has a variety of photography. He has some pictures like this, but he also has some humorous pictures. Pictures. He has some serious pictures. He covers a wide range of topics, which you will see. So starting with this photo right here, this is a very picturesque scene. Most of his photos are dealing more with closer with humans and life and dogs and things like that. But this is a, a beautiful photo here. And the reason it works, first off, you can tell that he, he looks like he took it through the window of his car right here. But just look at the scene here. You have the car here, juxtaposition with the train, two forms of transportation. Then you have the nice lines of the road here, the line of the train. Then you have the smoke here, which adds a lot to it, and the picturesque scene here. And then a little bit of a framing with the window too. So it's just a really nice photo to look at. Uh, looks really good in black and white to film. But starting off with this, this is a classic Elliot Erwitt shot here. And here's a very different photo than the last one. Up close, personal shot here, has a lot of mood and feeling. There's a lot going on and there's a lot that works here. One thing that really works here is the timing of expression and gesture. So he clicked the shutter at the right moment when you have this expression here, that just the face here says a lot with the gesture here of the hand, the kind of slight smirk there, the eyes. This is just a, it's a great expression there. It says a lot, but then you also have both of them looking at him. So it brings even more focus to this expression, but at the same time, they have their own expressions too, especially her with her eyes like that. You kind of wonder what they're thinking. You wonder what he's thinking. He looks like he's kind of off in his own thought there. Um, and then just what, the way they're dressed here, it looks like they got married. Just a beautiful, beautiful picture of life here. And you have her at the end here but there's connection here. So he got up, he filled the, filled the frame here. He has great subjects and he really caught some nice gesture and expression. Now here I have a few of his more famous dog photos. He has a whole book on dogs. He's very known for his pictures of dogs. And some of the reasons his photos of dogs are so famous are he finds humor from the dogs, but he also finds somewhat human qualities from the 
pictures of dogs too. And so he mixes kind of the humor and the life of the dogs here makes it even more. And this photo he gets up close here. So this has a few things working. First off, it's a funny little dog, of course, tongue out like that. The dog is wearing clothes. So that makes it humorous too. But then he gets up close. Actually, in the original photo, he did uh, end up cropping it quite a bit. So he wasn't as close as it looks, but he wanted the actual photo of the dog to be up close like this. So he cropped it. So you're only getting the very bottoms of her feet here, just the top of her skirt. And that gives a lot of perspective because this is a very small dog and just having these feet here and the legs here makes the dog, it kind of brings attention and shows how small that dog is too. Makes the dog look even more small. And then you have the background there. So it's a funny scene and he works the perspective there too with the feet here. And there's no need to get more of the human in there because the dog is what this photo is all about. Similar here, he gets down on the ground with the dog. So we have perspective down with the dogs, which gives the dog more attention and makes you, f it gives you a more intimate look at dogs. You're not looking down on dogs like you normally do. You're getting right up with them. And this one adds humor too. And it adds a little bit of uh, interest because you have this little dog again with clothes. So he finds funny dogs, but then you have the legs here and then you have another dog's legs here and obviously a much bigger dog. So again, this getting down low here and just showing the feet, it adds perspective. It shows you how small the dog is. And then in relation, it shows you how tall this dog is. It looks as tall as a human in this photo because of how they're side by side here and you don't see how how much higher each of them go. So it looks like the dog's just as tall as a human here. So that adds a bit of interest and humor too. So I like this photo even more than the last one because of that. I really like this dog here. And then one last selection of his more famous dog photos, probably I think maybe his most famous one is this one here. Now this uses a little bit of illusion. And today in street photography, this type of you know, photo is very trendy. People trying to put heads of animals on people, things like that. But back when Elliot did it, it wasn't a trend. He he made this and it was more of an original shot when he took it. And also, I don't think really anyone's done it better than this when it comes to dogs. He's got a few photos with bulldogs because they're very interesting looking dogs, just their mugs and everything like that. But here you have it really work really well because especially in black and white, because the dog kind of the dog body here just blends with the human body. So it looks like it's almost part of it. You can see the human's ear right there, but that's about it. And it just goes right in with it. And then there's some gesture here with the hands, how the hands are splayed out like this. Then you have the feet and how the knees are in like that adds a little more interest too. It all really works together. And then he's got the leash holding another dog too on the steps here gives you a sense of place too. So this is a funny shot, but it really works well. And today in street photography, you're going to see a lot of shots that were influenced by shots like this. Here's another one that would be kind of trendy today, but back when Elliot did it, it was a little more original. And even today, I haven't really seen a shot quite like this. It's a funny shot. Not everyone's going to like shots like these, but uh, a lot of people are going to love them. So uh, for this one, I think his subject is interesting too. She's has an interesting face there with the glasses and how she's just peeking through the blinds here or the, the wood here. And then, of course, you have this juxtaposition here and you know what that looks like. Uh, and then you have her hand on the newspaper and it's just an interesting scene. It's a funny shot. And then another shot here that would be considered very street today with the juxtaposition of the bird here and this here almost mimicking each other. It's another funny shot and it gives you a connection there and it's just a good eye that he caught that. Here, we have a little bit of humor again. Now you have the perspective too. You have this huge float here, and then a pink panther, and then you have the boys here in the window. So it gives you some perspective and how he's peeking out the side here. They're kind of peeking out the window. If, if this was all the way in front here, I don't think it would be as interesting, but having Pink Panther kind of peeking out the side or the corner of the building, I think it makes it more interesting too. And then you have the city in the background. So it all works nicely. Another shot that he has a, quite a few shots that there's a bit of humor, but it's humor from life. And that's kind of one of the things he's known for. So this is 
this is a strange scene here. You have this big sign here, lost persons area. I don't know why that sign's there, but then you have these people here. And then to add even more to it, you have this baby lying like this. And then you have two people standing on the bench. So this is a good example of a photo that gives you a lot of questions without all the answers, which for a lot of people, including myself, is a good thing because it brings you in enough. It gives you a lot of information like what the sign and what all the things happening, but it doesn't really give you answers to that. So you see this, the more you see, almost the more you want to know. And the composition works too. Here's another strange scene. You have these mummies here all looking in on this couple here. And this couple works really well too because he waits for great gesture here. So this gesture with the hand here and her hand like that, and then both looking but not looking directly at each other, even the expression here, it really works well because the timing of that, all this gesture and expression provides connection, it brings you in and it gives you a little bit of feeling. You know they're talking about something, but you don't really know what, so it also gives you some questions like the last one. And then to top it off with these mummies on both sides, both looking in on them, it brings focus to them and adds a very strangeness to the scene. It's, it's just a very, another scene that gives you questions like what is going on type of scene. And another one that has a bit of humor too, but composed very well. Now it looks like, uh, I don't know, I have no idea what's going on here. It's like the opposite of what you'd expect. Usually when they're doing portraits like this, the person that they're painting or drawing is nude, but in this case we have the opposite. So he's in a very strange scene that's gonna, again, ask questions of the viewer, but provide a lot of humor and wonder. And then he composes it very well. And with nudity, you know, it's kind of humorous too. And uh, and then also having her right in the middle with some gesture here brings you in, in right here too. Okay, now we get into a couple more, a little more serious photos, but at the same time, this one's playful too. So you have soldiers here with their guns. You don't know exactly where they're at. Now, in this case, they're not in a war or anything like that. They're at Fort Dix in New Jersey. So that's partly why probably he's playful in this photo. But it's still the subject matter. It mixes that, but with this playful look here, you have the nice background here of the soldiers and then this man up close and just a great expression right in the middle there. So for me, it's a very interesting photo because of those reasons. Now this photo here is the most serious of all these. It says a lot. It's a very, you know, strong photo. There, this obviously back when there was segregation and you have the white and the colored fountains here and he catches it really well. I mean, first off, the subject matter in the scene, just this right here is already says a lot and is a very important photo but having the man here using the fountain adds a lot to it too, and having him on the edge here. And we'll finish it off with this classic Elliot Erwitt photo. Great photo here, he's using the reflection in the car here. You have the nice background here of the sea, and then you have this couple here kissing, and she has that smile and expression. So this has a lot working for it. This is a photo that will appeal to a lot of people. It's a beautiful photo, very picturesque, romantic, it love. It, it has a lot of feeling, emotion, and very visually appealing because of the scene and because of the, the mirror play here and because of the expression. So here, everything works for strengths. You have somewhat of a frame within a frame there with the mirror. You have the picturesque scene, you have a couple, a theme of love, and a nice expression and gesture that brings you in. So we'll finish off with that photo, but as you can see, Elliot has a lot of strengths. He can take photos in many places, many subject matter, and he can find ways to find interest out of it. He has an eye for the humor and playful side of life. Not all of his photos are serious. He's able to find juxtaposition, connections out of everyday scenes. And a lot of his photos are very influential to street photography you see today. He was doing it back before street photography was such a popular thing though. So more of an original when it comes to that. All right, so hope you enjoyed going through some of Elliot Erwitt's photos there. Hopefully you learned something too. And if you did enjoy his work, there's a number of books I'd recommend checking out from him. Number one, you have Personal Bests and Personal Exposures. You have his book, Snaps. 
You have Elliot Erwitt's dogs, which has a selection of his dog photos that he's really known for. And you have Elliot Erwitt's color, color spelled with a K, which has a selection of his color photos. He's known for his black and white, but he has some great photos in color too. So that book's interesting to check out. Some other photographers I'd recommend checking out. One, Robert Kappa, who he was actually mentored by. Then there's Henry Cartier-Bresson. Uh, Joseph Kudalka would be a good one to check out. And also another fellow Magnum photographer, Richard Calver, who is also known for finding the comical and absurdity out of everyday life. So those are the photographers I'd recommend checking out. But that brings us to the end of this Learn From the Best on Elliot Erwitt. If you'd like to see me cover any other photographers in this series, make sure to tell me. You can send me on DM or send me email, 100majorcities100majorcities at gmail.com. But in the meantime, thanks for watching and I'll see you next video. Cheers.